Our legislative reporter in Edmonton, Joshua Skernick, joins us now. He's been tracking this. He is in the Alberta capital. Josh, as I say, this is uh, headaches for the three rivals. But tell us, what's the latest on Redford's silly spending abuses? David, it's been three months since Redford resigned as Premier of the province, and now she is a backbencher for Calgary Elbow, but yet she still manages to keep in the headlines and into the platforms of all of these leadership candidates. Now, one of the stories that came out this week came from us, from documents we obtained on that Jasper trip during the Canada Day long weekend in 2013, which she billed to taxpayers, but yet she brought along her daughter and her daughter's friend. Well, it turns out that she only had two hours of consecutive meetings that Saturday at the very hotel she was staying at and now these government officials well one of them was a VP of the very hotel chain she was staying at also a Jasper Park superintendent and the artist of the hotel art gallery she was done by 3 15 p.m. and had the weekend to herself and her family now also we learned this week more on all that travel spending now it turns out that according to documents released by the government that she spent three hundred thousand dollars more on international travel than what she reported because she had an advanced scout go to places such as India, China, Switzerland before she got there in order to check out all of the restaurants, hotels, meeting places, etc., to make sure that they were good enough for her. And I can tell you that previous premiers did not do anything of that sort, especially Ralph Klein and Stelmack. And also, the other thing to cap it all off was on her former executive assistant, Ryan uh, Barbario. Now, after he left his posting with Redford, he got a plum job in Denver, Colorado for the international relations part of the government. Now, while he was there, because he kept his primary residence in Calgary, he was able to bill tens of thousands of dollars to the taxpayer in food, travel, leisure activities, and also $25,000 in four months for a hotel in Denver, Colorado. Now, we had talked about these leadership candidates, and of course, this is a story that they just could not ignore. And so we caught up with most of them. And today in Calgary, Jim Prentice, he tried to distance himself from the PC party of old, saying that he had nothing to do with it. Take a listen. When new broom sweeps clean, uh, what we need is someone from the outside who was not part of all this. Um, I was not at the cabinet table when any of this was taking place. And uh, I can assure you that any cabinet table I've ever been at, uh, this would not have happened, and it would not have happened, and I would have not sat by as it happened. And so I made it very clear that uh, you know one of my priorities will be to restore uh, the trust and confidence of the people of this province in their government, and this will be the end of entitlements in the way that we're seeing. And so I'm disappointed, and I will do something about it. Now, Thomas Lukasik in Edmonton today, he had some stronger words, actually. Now, not only has he said that he sh thinks that Alison Redford should consider resigning her posting as an MLA for Calgary Elbow, today he went even further. He says that if he is elected as Premier, he will ask caucus to consider kicking Alison Redford out of the party. Take a listen. When I become a Premier, if I'm so lucky uh, to be one, uh, that will be one of the things that would ha I would have to deal with uh, right up front because uh, I simply will not allow uh, this kind of behavior and, and this kind of disregard for taxpayers' money uh, to be in any way sh uh, casting a cloud uh, over, over our government. Now, David, we did get a statement from David. We did get a statement from Rick McIver on all of this, uh, these FOIP documents and etc. And McIver said, "Quote: I'm always stressing the need for value to the taxpayer. It's essential that we, as a government, respect the taxpayer dollar. As leader and premier, I will have that expectation of every member of government, but especially of my own staff." Now, David, of course, this leadership race is in the midst of the of it going on right now. It is going to end up uh, coming September. We're going to have that first vote. I think it's September 9th, and then if it comes to it, then a second vote uh, a week or two later. But still, things are heating up, and Redford, she just manages to keep in the midst of it. David. All right, Joshua Skernick in the legislature. Just to back up, and I want to go back up to the, the work uh, you guys did on this, that Jasper trip. To sum it all back, she essentially made up some business. I mean, that's what it looks like just so she could spend some time with her daughter and her daughter's friend at Jasper. Is that really the in-between-the-lines sort of takeaway on that one? Well, y y in those documents, we found that there was actually a planned governor's meeting in Utah down south that fell through. So on the surface, now you have to remember, we haven't got, been able to get a hold of Redford to comment or anybody mm -hmm, else sure. in the government. 
Yeah, but on the surface, it looks like that trip to Utah fell through. So Redford then pulled together some government meetings, uh, government meetings in Jasper for that weekend, had two consecutive hours. So that means that she woke up at the hotel she was staying at, had those two hours of meetings with the artist and the Jasper Park superintendent, and that was done by 315. And then on Sunday, she only had that morning flood uh, update meeting on the situation in High River that she had been having for the last couple of days. And then she was on her merry way home. And so that was her big weekend in Jasper that the taxpayer was footing the bill for. Joshua Skernick in the legislature in Edmonton tonight for us. Josh, great reporting. Thank you so much.